how differently are you thinking of the Big East today than you thought of the Big East heading into the season? I mean, it's obviously improved in, in perception, both at the top and at the bottom. Going into the year, it was kind of Villanova and then a pretty big drop off to the next tier. And then it was like, you know, are UConn, Xavier, are they even top 25 teams? And now I think there's maybe five teams in the top 25. And in the bottom of the league is pushing up too. I mean, Georgetown just beat Syracuse. Marquette looked great at the beginning of the year. Uh, Creighton just beat BYU. So it's, it's just from top to bottom, the entire league, it seems more balanced. It seems better at the top. It's more competitive. Um, just, just top to bottom, it's, it's been really impressive what they've done through one month. Matt, the biggest surprise thus far in the Big East is? I think you would have a hard time making an argument for anyone other than DePaul. Let's get it on the record. I, I, I'm going hard on DePaul before Borzella could get there. <laughs> nine and one. Nine and one. Only loss by four at home to a Loyola Chicago team that is setting up to be, again, top three, four mid-major in the country. Wins on the road against Louisville. And for DePaul, any kind of road win is worth immense value. They have two road wins already. New coach, Tony Subblefield. DePaul being 9-1, and one, I don't know if this is going to mean that they can sustain this rut league play, but let's give them their flowers right now here. The Blue Demons, I, I know the non-conference schedule largely wasn't that impressive, but they'd also beat Rutgers. No one thought DePaul was going to win nine of its first ten. It has, and so for me, that's the biggest surprise. I would probably go Seton Hall and Providence. I mean, going into the year, Seton Hall was expected to finish fifth in the league. And, and right now, they, they might be the highest-ranked team. Well, for me, they're the highest-ranked team in my power rankings. I have them ahead of Villanova right now. I mean, they've beaten Michigan. They beat Texas. And to me, the thing about them is, is you know, Kadari Richmond was, was hyped going into the year. He was going to be a difference maker for them. I don't think he's hit his stride yet. And so I think when he does, at both ends of the floor, he kind of gives them a ceiling that we might not have seen yet, despite their good wins. I think he kind of takes them to another level when he plays well. And then Providence, you know, they've, they've looked great. Um, you know, they had that one weird loss to a pretty bad Virginia team, but they beat Wisconsin, they beat Northwestern, they beat Texas Tech, and they're big. I mean, they go 6'11", 6'7", 6'6". I mean, they're just they're a big team. Uh, Al Derm's made a big uh, big impact since coming over. A.J. Reeves is kind of taking the next step. The past couple of games, he's been really, really good. Um, I just think both those teams right now, they're top 25 teams. They weren't expected to be that in the preseason. And so for them, for me, those two were the biggest surprises. All right, last but not least, if you could delegate one Big East coach to host a Christmas party, uh, who would you have host the party? You go first, Porcello. <laughs> um... Because there's a lot of factors to take into account here. <laughs> I mean, if I, if I put on, like, my invitation, Jay Wright's hosting my Christmas party, like, I think people are going to be intrigued. I think it's, it might bring some people in the door. They might not have come. Um, so I'd probably uh, go with him. Just you're going with Jay Wright? Hold on. I said, if I'm, if I'm a volume guy, if I just want people there, I think Jay Wright's my pick. A lot of factors to take into account here. All right, question one. Is the party being held at the home of the head coach? Yes. Where they currently oh. live? I didn't know that. What are you, what are you thinking, Borsello? They're going to I want to look up real okay. estate listings and things. I want to see who lives in, like, a palace. Okay, so. Well, you think you they're going to rent out a thing. hall? Okay, first of all, <laughs> Borsello is way, way off on <laughs> Patrick Ewing is bringing more intrigue than any other. He, he's friends with Jordan. Not to say that Jordan's going to be showing up, but Patrick Ewing's reach is a, a, just a little if bit. It was gonna be in, if it was going to be at my house, I'd have Patrick Ewing's. That's New York. I'd have literally everyone in the state come here. I'm just okay. saying. Okay. <laughs> Again, the head coach is hosting. They're saying Borzello's methodology on why Jay Wright, he, he could, be a little, could be a little bit off there. I feel like Patrick Ewing's guest list might be just a little bit better than, than Jay Wright's. Even though but Jay's is he inviting player. the people or am I inviting the people? He's inviting the people. I didn't know this. I didn't know any of this. I what thought it was you, my what, party. I just had to pick a host. Why assuming control of this guest list when it's the Christmas party at the head I coach? I thought I had to find a location. I think I thought I had to make the guest list. If, if I was letting a coach pick everything or, or at least, you know, you make his own guest list, you I probably would have said Ewing. But I didn't know, I didn't know these details. But if I'm combining, like, Ed Cooley's got some USA basketball connections. I'm going Cooley. I think Cooley – is going to be – he's just going to put on the best party imaginable. Yeah. And it's not like – listen, 
Jay Wright, I know he's not wearing the suit anymore. I, I'm not saying it would be completely stuffy. It just might be one of those things where you walk. Jay Wright's going to have the house where you walk in and the Christmas tree's got gold and silver and the tree is just kind of like more prim and proper. Ed Cooley's going to have the homemade ornaments, you know, all sorts of just humongous buffet going on. I said, I said Jay was my pick if I was a volume guy. If I wanted the whole deal, it would have been, been Cooley. But I'm a volume guy. I just want, I just want people there. This is my favorite discussion topic, podcast, digital show, otherwise of the entire month. Didn't know it was coming. But... Me neither. I would have prepared. I would have looked at, at oh, real yeah, time me, There's a lot we of... Should have with, we should have led with this. We should yeah. have. We might. This could have been 20 minutes on its own. Correct. I think it has almost been, actually. It almost is, by the way. Yeah. I'm going cool. Cooley is, is my pick, but there are compelling cases to be made for Jay, for Ewing, for Steele, and... The Dan Hurley possibilities, no. good, bad, or otherwise. I you're think not. You're not getting Hurley to host your party. 